I'm Dr. Enrique Skolnik, nutritionist and veterinarian with Progressive Dairy Solutions. We're here this morning to talk about the importance of feeder training at our dairies. We believe feeder training is one of the most important things we can do for employee training at a dairy. In order to achieve excellence in feeding routines, we need to train our feeders and transform them from a truck driver and a heavy equipment operator to a cowman. And by cowman, I mean, I mean we need to train them in how the cow functions, how what we do every day when we load up ingredients in our wagon, when we mix our ration, how that affects rumen health of the cow. One of the most important things we can teach a feeder is the inner workings of the rumen. Cows have four stomachs, with the rumen being the most important one. The rumen is a, like a big, big fermentation vat, and we can compare it to uh, our mixer wagon. We load up ingredients in the mixer wagon, or the cow eats the TMR, the feed that we feed her, and the, the rumen is like a big mixer. It continuously contracts and mixes that feed. That feed ferments inside that rumen, and with fermentation come a couple of products. One is uh, VFAs, or volatile fatty acids, which are a major source of, source of energy for the cow, and also gas and acid production. If that fermentation occurs too fast, such as in a ration with too much grain, we have excessive acid and excessive gas production. And that's what we see in cows sometimes as bloat, when cows bloat. Also, excessive acid production can cause damage to the surface of the rumen and cause uh, ulcers in cows. So in order to minimize rumen health problems, maximize performance, it is very important to have a consistent uh, ration. If you think about the different steps uh, that we perform every day when we feed cows, you can think that we have different rations really at a dairy. The first ration is the ration on paper, so the ration that the nutritionist designs. It can be a good ration or it can have some, some problems. The second ration is the ration that we load up into the truck. That is affected by ingredient quality, the order that we load up the ingredients, and the accuracy in which we add those ingredients to that feed wagon. The third ration is a ration that comes out of the truck, and that is affected by mixing times, is affected by the RPMs that we set our mixer at. Also, after the ration comes out of the truck, we have the ration that the cows eat. If we make a ration that is very sortable, cows are gonna make their own ration. They're gonna separate the different ingredients. They're gonna eat the hay separate from the grains. And then the fifth ration that we have is the ration that the cows digest. If we're feeding an ingredient that is not digestible, for example, instead of putting a bale of alfalfa hay in the ration, we put a, a bale of wheat straw. Well, a lot of that wheat straw may not be digested by a high producing cow. So she's not gonna be able to digest all the nutrients in that straw, just from that straw not being uh, a high quality ingredient. Or another example would be using a dry cow hay instead of milk cow hay. Uh, passage rate in high producing cows is a lot faster, so they won't be able to pull the nutrients out of a dry cow hay versus uh, pulling the nutrients out of a more digestible high cow hay. So once our feeders understand all these basic concepts, once they understand how that rumen works, then they can really do a much better job minimizing all those changes. So 
when we have a feeder that is only good at driving a truck or driving heavy equipment, we're missing a huge opportunity. We need to train these feeders to understand how the rumen works and how what they do every day impacts rumen health and cow performance. One of the things I teach feeders is to use all their senses to check on ingredient quality. Um, far too often we lose focus and uh, lose focus of the quality of ingredients that we're using. So what I, what I mean by using all your senses is using your sight to make sure that there are uh, no problems with the silage. For example, if you can, if you can see here, we have some, some of the crust that has fallen down from the top. It looks like there's a lot of mold there. So we can use our sight to say, well, th this is not an ingredient that we want to feed. We need to separate that. Um, also, we can use our, our sense of smell. So when we smell good quality silage, um, it has a nice sweet smell to it. But if we grab any of this uh, feed that comes from the crust, we smell it, it's going to have a moldy, stale smell at best. And at worst, it's going to smell putrefied. Um, it's going to smell spoiled. Um, sometimes heh, we probably want to grab that with a pair of gloves because you get that smell on your hands, you won't take it out, you, you won't get it out of there for days. So we have our sight uh, to check for the good quality, we have our sense of smell, and also our sense of touch because we can, um, we can always uh, put our hands in this face and check for heat. Heat is a sign of um, spoilage. So we can also use a thermometer to check for heat. Um, but this, this silage, the face of this silage, if it's managed correctly, it should be at room temperature. It should be cool. So as we discuss ingredient quality, we like to look at our silage pile face and evaluate how well the feeder is uh, shaving off of that face. Ideally, we want to shave about a foot a day off of the face and have a straight surface there in order to prevent oxygen from getting into that pile. As oxygen gets into that pile, the silage heats up and we lose nutrients. So in this example, we can see that instead of the feeder coming sideways and shaving off the face, he's going with a bucket loader um, right in front of him and taking big chunks of silage off the face. What that does is it may, it obviously increases the surface exposed to oxygen. Um, as we, we grab silage off of piles like this, we may feel that the silage is heated up. Um, sometimes it may have a off smell because we're getting secondary fermentation on the face. And also the other thing that we that I like to point out is we have this large overhang over here and that obviously represents a huge safety issue for us and for the feeder. So we want to minimize um, those overhangs. We, we don't want to see any of those overhangs in our silage piles. One of the most important things we can teach a feeder is to have a consistent distribution along the feed bunk. The reason for that is we want every cow to have the same opportunity as the cow next to her to get to feed. Sometimes uh, we have cows that are very dominant and they will, they will push their way to the feed uh, faster, better than a shyer cow. But that doesn't mean that that, cow is, uh, that dominant cow is a better producer. Sometimes the shyer cow uh, is going to be a much higher producer than the dominant cow. So again, we want to have every cow, we want to give her, give every cow the opportunity to have the same access to feed as the cow next to her. Also, another thing that is extremely important is as we, as cows work themselves down, work the feed down in the feed bunk uh, to push up that feed. Um, when we run low in feed, 
uh, aggressive interactions in between cows increase uh, and stress increases. Also, sortability of the ration when there's a lot of competition at the feed bunk increases. And we want to minimize um, any negative effects that we may have on eating behavior. As you can see, this mix is very homogeneous. Uh, the cow won't be able to sort uh, this feed very well. And that's what we want. We want every cow to get the same bite of feed as the cow next to her. As we, uh, we talked about earlier, um, the loading of the ingredients, uh, the mixing of the ingredients, the speed of the, um, uh, of the truck, in other words, the RPMs, are extremely important to have a well-mixed feed, a well-mixed and homogeneous feed.